If you there in uh, chapter 21, John, you'll see uh, verses uh, 15 through 17. These are really uh, revealing verses. I don't know about you. I don't know if I would ever want the Lord to ask me these verses. <laughs> but notice what it says there in verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And we know uh, the Lord asked Peter three times, and uh, even in verse 17, he says it the third time, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, and he ought to be grieved. And, uh, and we ought to be grieved too, but you see, the idea of what the Lord is uh, dealing here, or dealing with as he begins to uh, work with Peter. Now I want to look at this this morning because I I just love how the Lord is, is working to restore Peter. Let's look at, first of all, um, some reconsidering. Some things have to be reconsidered, first of all, in verses 1 and through 3. Chapter 21, starting verse 1, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. Um, and then he gives a list of the disciples. There's only seven there. <clears throat> okay, remember Judas has uh, already hung himself, but uh, this is after the Lord's resurrection. In verse 3, Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. I want you to see that. That night they caught nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, notice it says, that night. I think there's like an emphasis, you know, the Holy Spirit puts that word, that. Not just like any night, you know. Now, um, I was thinking for a minute, well, do you actually go fishing at night? And... And many of the commentators said, yeah, well, that's the normal time that they would go fishing. Um, but, you see, the old thing is that they caught nothing. That was kind of odd. Okay? They, it was odd. Now, you can say, well, why was it odd? Or, you know, weren't they, these men trained fishermen? Yes, they were. If you think back uh, in the history, we'll look at uh, Luke chapter 5 in a little bit. But, you see, but they were in the wrong occupation, right? Don't you think? Were they in the wrong profession? <coughs> yeah, they were. You see, they, were, they weren't called to be fisher of fish. They were called to be fishers of men. And really, we have to say, uh, they're out of the will of God. They are out of the will of God. Uh, verse 3, you know, we have Simon there. He's, he's still kind of leading. You know, I go fishing, and the others, they went with him. He was the ringleader. He was the, well, also he was the denier of Christ. But wait a minute. Didn't they all deny the Lord? Didn't they all flee? Uh, I think Peter, you know, set himself up for a bigger fall because he, you know, we'll see that he said, well, Lord, uh, all these will deny you, but I won't. All these will forsake you, but I won't. But notice here in the, uh, uh, he says, I go fishing, so Peter is leading the way. But in verse 1, notice it says, um, it says, and these things Jesus showed himself again. So it's not the first time. And so the Lord, I believe, is in the process of restoring Peter, restoring these, these disciples. Um, but see, notice the power of unbelief here. The Lord, again, reveals himself, even in these verses, it says there, I think, in that verse uh, uh, 14, this is the third time the Lord Jesus revealed himself to the disciples after his resurrection. And, and we just have to say, they don't get it. They don't get it. They weren't called to be fishers anymore of fish. They were called to be fishers of men. And so they had to reconsider this, okay? Now, Paul says this in Romans eleven twenty nine: 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And that's you kind of say, well, what's the context of that? And you take Romans uh, uh, 9, 10, 11 together. You see, in, in the sense that God is programmed with Israel's not over. Though they did not uh, believe, though they rejected the Messiah, it seems like the word, ha uh, word of God had none effect. It seems like God's election and preordination failed. And God said, no, no, I, everything's right on time. Everything's right on time. And nothing, nothing failed, okay? 
the God, in God's purpose. But he says, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. You see, and this word, uh, without repentance, is a matter of irrevocable. You know, maybe we can talk about, you know, once saved, always saved, or eternal security, or preservation, or perseverance of the saints. You know, when God gives you salvation, He doesn't take it away from you. Because you didn't earn it, you didn't buy it. The Lord Jesus bought it, and, and God says, and it's all by promise. That means it's an unconditional covenant. God, through the Lord Jesus, is going to make it good to the end. You see, we just have to get on board and get with the program. And we would enjoy it more, right? You know, is there anything stopping you from growing in grace, excelling in, in holiness, in purity and righteousness? No, you, you, have, you have as much as I do. Each one of us as Christians. And so uh, we avail uh, to these gifts. Uh, the Lord Jesus, in his uh, earthly minister, ministry, had to call these twelve. Well, we think of the eleven, but now right here, there's only seven. They were called to be apostles. They were called to be fishers of men. And we have to say, has God's plan changed? Has God's uh, uh, plan failed? Now, I don't... Uh, I understand there are, there, that we, we know certain men that have been you know, in the ministry for years and, and then now they're out of it and we wonder, well, you know, God called them. They can't, you know, they must be out of the will of God. I don't understand all that. I don't. Okay? I understand, you know, it would be very for, hard for me to say, well, uh, uh, because I, you know, I burned out or something or I, uh, you know, I just had, you know, had enough that I can't handle the ministry. I, I couldn't, that would be very hard, okay? But, but you see, we can, we can look at the apostles, okay? They were called to be apostles. They were called to be uh, fishers of men. And God's plan has not changed. God's purposes have not failed. And, but to see, the problem is, they're ignoring the call of God. Peter says, I go fishing. Okay? Now what would you do after you saw the Lord the first time after His resurrection? Now think of this. I mean, this is the second time. So they, they know, and we'll see in a minute, that, that the Lord uh, purposely appeared unto Simon. Okay? So the Lord is, is in this um, re reestablishing uh, Peter uh, as they consider these things. Okay? Reconsidering. You see, they're ignoring the call of God. You know, like Elijah. You know? He's in the cave there. 1 Kings 19. The Lord says, Elijah, what are you doing here? You know? Elijah, what are you doing here? This is ancient. This is not here. You're not supposed to be here. Or, or they were not only ignoring the call of God, but they were rejecting the call of God. You know, Jonah. You know, I, you know, like I always like Pastor David and he preaching on Jonah. So he looked in his pocket. He found enough money, just enough money from the fair there at Tarsus there, and and he said, "Oh, it must have been God's will for me to go down." God just had enough. No, it wasn't. He was rejecting the call of God. He was on a ship down there sleeping. And that, that should give you a question mark. You know? Sleeping, uh, heading in the opposite direction. And so, first thing here, the Lord wants us to see these ones. They need to reconsider some things. You know, what are you doing going fishing when you should be... You're apostles. You've been called to apostles. God hasn't changed. And uh, uh, God has always... Uh, God has always, you know... He's going to bring these ones uh, to a place of dissatisfaction. Uh, you know, okay, Peter, you go fishing for a while, but after a while, you're going to get tired of it. Why? Because you've been called to a higher thing, right? Like uh, Kathy was talking about this one Chinese, I think it was a Chinese Christian, that, that uh, he, was, uh, he was thrown in prison for the testimony of the Lord, and he denied the Lord. He got out of prison. And he went home, and he was so miserable. He was so miserable. And then he said he went on the streets, and he began to cry out in Chinese, "As I, I am, I'm like Peter. I'm Peter that denied the Lord. I am Peter. I denied the Lord. He couldn't live with himself. He had to be restored." And they got thrown back in prison. I think another 18 years. And then this, uh, the the Chinese man was. I, I'm not. You know, I mean, I mean, bits, bits and pieces of the, but of, of the story. But you see. Uh, God has ways to bring his, his cold ones to a place of dissatisfaction. Notice this. That night, they caught nothing. Ever been fishing? Caught nothing at all? Oh, I hate that. I mean, I like fishing. 
And I said, oh man, catch none, not even that, you know, not even, you know, I've been out there where there's not even been bites. I'm sitting there, you know, there's, you know, wrong night, no. Let's look at point number two, the recommissioning. The recommissioning. Let's read verses 4 through 10. And I know that we've read this already, but I just want to give this each point fresh in your minds. Verse 4, it says, But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, or sirs, lads, have you any meat? They answered him, No. Uh, and he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast it for and not... And now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, and for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred uh, cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereupon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Now we're talking about recommissioning. And I, and I think you have to kind of, it's not just Peter, but I think all the apostles here, you know, but it, particularly it's Peter, okay? But notice here, um, verse 10, it says, uh, uh, which you have now caught, compared to what we said in verse 3, uh, that night they caught nothing. What is the difference? What is the difference? Well, if you just want to, you know, think of some things that, you know, well, first of all, it's, it's daytime. <laughs> you know, darkness always con conveys, you know, uh, you know, anguish or, you know, things of that sort, you know, moping around in darkness, not seeing, not knowing. But you see, it says in verse 4, but when the morning was come now. Now, see of that verse in Psalm 30, verse 5. He says, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It says, hope deferred making the heart sick. The Lord knows just when. He needs to break in, you know, like the, the saying, you know, it's darkest before the dawn, you know. And that's, it's that you're, you know, interesting. And so here we see that it is now daytime, the Lord Jesus is standing there. They don't, they don't recognize him, okay. Uh, he's still, not in a way, not known to the disciples. <coughs> Look at verse 5, if you would. The question. Uh, Children or lads or sirs, have you any meat? And uh, you and then they say, no. I could ask, you know, the Lord says, uh, well, why not? Aren't you even good at fishing anymore? <laughs> you, can't even, you can't even catch any fish anymore? You know, it's like, you know, no, uh, why not? You see, the Lord said to Elijah, Elijah, what goes <laughs> down here? See, Elijah says, Elijah means, my God is Jehovah. And I think the Lord is saying to Elijah, Elijah, uh, can't God, can't the God of Elijah help you? Can't, can't, can't the God of Elijah, the God of Peter, can't they help you catch fish? Peter, don't you understand that? This recommission here is, is as we think of verse 6, is, six to 8, okay? Um, this is a, uh, a repeat, you know, repeat and repeat. In a sense, uh, if you would turn back uh, to Luke chapter five, yeah, how many? Let's see, I mean, three years, okay, three years earlier, three and a half maybe. Give would take, you know, roughly three years earlier. What happened? Let's read Luke five one through eleven for a minute. This is the. This is not their conversion experience. This is not when they got saved. This is when they got called to be fishers of men. But notice the, the details, it's just like John 21. It's like a repeat and repeat, okay? Luke 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, 
and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were, were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into thy deep, and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. You know, we could stop there for a minute, okay? Okay? And here's, here's another night, three years later. We've been toiling all night long, and we haven't caught a minnow. We haven't, you know, professional fishermen, okay? This is like, you know, this is what they make their living on. So they got to be saying, well, this is, you know, you know, like you think of, uh, uh, Lord, what are you doing? Uh, but notice it says, uh, I like what Peter says after this, and having taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now some things here, you see, in verse 10 is the commission. Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. Look, two things here in Luke's account. First of all, uh, verse 11 what does God require of these men? And, uh, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You see, they were true disciples. You see, not only, you know, you think of a, this is the call to salvation, but also this is the call to service, you know. And you see, the call to salvation, the call to service it might be different, but you see, it's still what? They, they, they forsook all, they followed him. That's a disciple, okay? Now, Peter, later on, says to, to the Lord, he says, uh, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And that's what they did. I mean, could you imagine? I mean, uh, coming home and, and Kathy, and Kathy, uh, uh, you know, the Messiah called me uh, this morning and he wants me to be a disciple. Well, well dear, how are you going to get a paycheck? How are you going to work? You know, no, no, I'm going to be fishers of men. You're going to have to trust the Lord, you know. I mean, how many, how many men come home to their wife and say, Dear, I've been called to the mission field. And he said, You're crazy. But I believe also, if a man is called to the mission field, God has already been working on the wife. There, there is, you know, not that he calls the wife, okay. But, uh, you, know, you know, God would want both to be in agreement, okay. And so there might be some working that out. But you know, Peter said, I, I've left all. Okay? And so there is the first thing. The second thing, in, uh, <coughs> they were not longer, uh, let, me, let me show you this, in verse, uh, Luke 9, verse 62. In comparing to the first call and, and the recommissioning there in, Luke, in John 1. Uh, look what it says there, Luke 9, 62. This is what the Lord says. And Jesus said unto them, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Well, maybe we could say, No man putting his hand to the fishing rod, you know. No fishers of men. But in fact, what did these seven disciples do? They were looking back. They had taken their hands off the plow. Okay? And, uh, you know, in a way, you know, they're following Peter. I go fishing. We all go fishing. Well, that's not really... You see, you can see how they're out of the will of God. And, and you see the need for, for them to be recommissioned. They're out of the will of God. They're, they're not fit for service. They're out of their place. They're out of their order. They're out of their calling. It's interesting. Uh, uh, 
years when reading John Bunyan and, and John Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress and stuff like that. What got him thrown in jail? Uh, you see, the magistrate said, you're not licensed to, to preach. You're out of your calling. You're a tinker. You're, you're, you're the one who makes you know, pots and pans. That's your, you know, your class set. You, you should be doing that. No one has called you or licensed you to be a preacher. So you're out of your calling. And that's what got John Bunyan in trouble. Nonconformist. Okay? Nonconformity act. But notice here, if you're still there in Luke 5, look at verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, oh, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You see, I, I think of the Lord. Peter, are you a sinful man? Dear ones, do you really know your heart? I said, this is the beginning of the ministry. Remember, Peter's going to say a lot of things. And the disciples are going to say a lot of things. Lord, I'll never forsake you. Peter stood up, Lord, though they, you know, forsake you, I won't. Did Peter really know that he was a sinful man? Did he really know his heart? You see, when God gets done with him, Peter's going to know something about his heart. And so, uh, this is where we see this recommissioning, and uh, we, we, we know the story about Peter. You know, we know that the Lord is going to warn Peter. In Luke 22, verse 31, uh, and uh, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, and that you may shift you as wheat, but I have prayed for, you, for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. You see, Peter is going to be converted. No, that doesn't mean he's going to be saved all over again. That means he's going to fall. He's going to be broken. And God is going to convert, change his, put him back into the ministry as it were. Recommission him. Now, if you would, turn back to John chapter 21. So we compared the first commission, as it were, the first call uh, into service. And it's interesting. And as you compare John 21, you'll see it, it's a similar circumstance. You know, they're out in their boats, they're fishing, they caught nothing, and the Lord Jesus is there. And uh, Moses says here in verse 7, John 21, verse 7, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Remember, they didn't recognize who he was on the shore. It is the Lord. And now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Now, uh, you kind of say, well, why did, why did he cast himself uh, into to the sea? Uh, now, let me just back up. You see, uh, you've got to remember that, the, that this is the second time, or it says the third time, that, that the Lord revealed unto himself under the, the apostles. But uh, in Luke 24, 34, <coughs> I won't read that, but it, this, it says that, uh, well, let me read it. I'll give you an idea. Saying, the Lord is risen indeed, this is testimony, and hath appeared to Simon. You see, the Lord is out to recover, to restore Peter. Okay? Okay? And here, we see Peter uh, casting himself into, into the sea. Some say he wasn't really like naked, totally, uh, just as that he had his other coat off and all that. It doesn't really, but you see, um, sometimes I think about, well, was he naked? Was he ashamed? He saw the Lord? No. Um, I think he just, when he knew it was the Lord, he jumped into the, into the, into the sea, and started swimming, and said, Lord, I want to get to the Lord first. Notice that, that Peter, the Lord has been working on Peter. You know, Peter may have, have fallen grievously, and, uh, and uh, reproached his Lord. But you see, there, there's still that love. You see, that's about Peter. You know, Peter loved the Lord very much. Though he put, he would put his mouth, uh, foot in his mouth, he would say certain things that, uh, you know, he would draw a sword out, he would defend the whole uh, Roman army. You know, it's his Lord. And Peter still loves his Lord. Okay? He's zealous to get to his Lord. Then in verses 8 through 11, we see this, this great drop of fish coming. And it's amazing. I think it's a, we're going to look at some, like a foreshadow or prophetic uh, uh, examples or illustration here of what's going to happen in the future, okay, for Peter and the apostles. But you see, 
Uh, let me read this verse from John 4. When you think about all these fish, okay, that he's going to... Well, let's read 8 through 11, and then we'll read uh, John 4, 37 and 38. But John, uh, verses 8 through 11 for a minute. John 21, 8 through 11. And the other disciple came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. And as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereupon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all of there were so many, yet was not the net broken. And these, these are very important words. Okay? Now, in John 4, 37, 38, this is the, the, the time of the account of the Samaritan woman. Okay? And, uh, and this is what the Lord says. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereupon ye bestow no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. Now think of this. Really, I, you could say, well, the Old Testament prophets, they labored and stuff, and now we see coming to a conclusion here when the Lord's ministry and all that. Uh, you know, we, we see the, 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 the sowing, the reaping. But I think of what the Lord has done. You know, how much seed has He sown in the hearts of all these rejecting Jews? And who's going to harvest them? You see, it says the word of God is not going to come back void. It's going to go for it and accomplish my purpose, thus saith the Lord. You see, and yeah, well, uh, you know, the gifts of the calling of God are, are without repentance. You know, God is going to save and do a great work in Israel. And he's going to do that on the day of Pentecost. But see, God is going to use these men. They didn't labor as much as, as you know, they, yeah, they went out and preached. Yeah, the 70 did. They did. Okay. Okay, they were being trained for the three and a half years. But I, I think here when John says, uh, uh, one, the Lord says, One soweth and another reap. I sent you to reap that whereupon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you have entered into their labors. They're going to they're gonna reap a big, big, big harvest. And I think John chapter 21 is, is, is an illustration or of that. Okay, Now let's look at that for a minute. Notice here, uh, in verse 10, bring of the fish which you have now caught. You know, uh, Peter jumps off, he leaves the others, he rushes to the Lord, and the Lord says, Peter, you forgot something. <laughs> Peter, you forgot the fish. Go back and get the fish. And there you see Peter in verse 11. Simon Peter went up, and you know, I can see Peter being a, a big old guy, you know? Stock he got. And he just grabs that net and he starts pulling it in by himself. Bring the fish, Peter. And Peter, uh, you see, give Peter a command. And that's what the Lord is doing. And he obeys. He obeys. You see, this is part of that recommissioning, okay? You see, but notice before you are recommissioned, there has to be restored fellowship. You see that in verse 9. You see, the order is, you know, they're coming to this shore. You know, they, they got, the, 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 the nets is full. And as, as soon as then, as they were come to land, verse 9, they saw a fire coals there, and fish laid their fine and bread. You see, you know, the Lord, you know, yeah, you're going to take care of the fish. Bring the fish to shore. But you see, first thing before you can be recommissioned and, and be a fisher of men, you have to be restored to complete fellowship, Peter, and all the others. And so, this is a picture of that, for sure. Verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. You know, this is a picture of Pentecost. <coughs> chapter 2. So you, got, got it, you know, I have another message years ago. I preached on this in a different, different, uh, different theme. It says, how God makes a revivalist. You see, God breaks the person... And then he restores them and brings them to, them to a point. And here is Peter on the, on the day of Pentecost. He's been broken. He's been uh, uh, humiliated, yes. But he's been restored. He's been recommissioned. 
And he stands up there and he preaches and thousands are saved. Thousands are saved. You see, remember I said Peter and the others were out of, out of the will of God? They were unusable. They were unfit for the ministry. You see, they had to reconsider. You know, what did God tell them to do? And why am I going fishing when I should be fishing for men? So verse 11 is prophetic, really. And it's an illustration of how Peter was to be used. He drew the net to land full of great fish. All by himself? No. On the day of Pentecost, it was what the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord says, wait there in Jerusalem. Wait until you are endued with power from on high. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And when Peter stood up and he preached and thousands were saved, Peter was in a sense a new man filled with the Holy Spirit. And dear ones, no, it's not by power or by might. It's by my spirit, thus saith the Lord. Peter, you know, we're going to see that. He's pulling in those fishes. Now, um, notice it says great fish. <laughs> it's called mega fish. They were big fish. You think about how Paul says, you know, not many kings, not many princes, not many noble, but some are, okay? Some are called, okay? Great fish. Now, you, all you guys that love numerology or the numbers, you know, 153, what does that mean, 153? So that's just there by accident. Well, you, take, you go do a, a Google search, man. It's interesting. Biblical meaning of 153. Ah, oh, it's amazing. I mean, the mathematics, Josiah, that they come up with, you know, and it's really, you know, it's not just speculation, because there's so many coincidences of, you know, you do cubes of this, and cubes of that, and cubes of this, and you come up with 153, you do this, and, I mean, it's just amazing, okay? I mean, you know, it's not just uh, somebody manipulating the numbers, okay? 153 is there for a purpose, okay? Um, no, and, and again, why did they count them? Did they count it? Well, how did he come up with 153? So they're, they're there. Great. There's one, there's two, there's three. Okay? And the idea of 153, as I have studied it out, it's, it's a complete catch. A complete catch. And you can go, you know, uh, 1, 5, and 3, and 7, and 15, and multiple, all that other stuff. But I think the whole idea is, is now, remember, they're being recommissioned to be fishers of men. Okay? And this is pathetic of what they're going to do. You see, when the Lord Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me. You see, that's a complete catch. Not one of God's elect are going to be missed when the gospel net is drug out and brought in, okay? Now notice here, if you would, it says in verse uh, 11, Yet was not the net broken. Not a fish got away. But if you go to Luke's count, Luke 5, verse 6, and again it says the net break. You see, you 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 you, you put out the gospel net, you let it out, okay? And you, you you pull in the fish, and sometimes fish get away. But when it comes to God's divine plan and purposes to saving his elect, there's going to be 153. <laughs> exactly. And there's not going to be, you see, when God calls, the net is not going to break. You're going to be brought to shore, in a sense. You're going to be converted because uh, the Lord Jesus has purchased you. God has purposed it. God, the Lord Jesus has purchased you. And now God, the Holy Spirit, is going to apply it. And He's going to bring a missionary. He's going to bring a track. He's going to bring the Word of God into your, into your pathway. And He's going to save you. And preserve you and present you faultless before His glory. And that's what God does for Peter there on the day of Pentecost. That's recommissioning. I mean, uh, think of that for a minute, you know, uh, I, you know, do you suppose when the, the, the 120 in the upper room, book of Acts chapter 1, do you, do, you, do you suppose any of them imagine what was going to happen? I, I don't think so. I, I just don't. 
I mean, it, it, you know, uh, the promises, and and you know, you're going to do greater works than these, and and all these, you know, all these things. I, I, I you know, I can't imagine they really understood, uh, even had a, a glimpse of what was going to go when God, Holy Spirit, came down and the church was formed and birthed, and then Peter got up and preached, and uh, uh, you know, was it two thousand, three thousand Jews, hard, stiff-necked, murderous Jews who slew the Lord Jesus 40, 50 days earlier, God brought them in. That's the power of God. That's the 153. That's, that's what he's talking about. When I recommission you, Peter, you're going to preach there on the day of Pentecost, and the power of God is going to save them, and they're going to come in. Not one is going to be left out. And the Lord added to the church, such as should be saved. Let's go quickly in our time here. Uh, you see, I want to look at reconnecting for a minute. We talk about reconsidering. You see, what are you doing now? Uh, reconsidering is what have you been called to do, Peter and these other men? Uh, recommission. What are you supposed to be doing? Okay? Reconnecting. What can you do without me? What can you do without me? Look at John 21, verse 12 and 14. 12 and 14. Let me read it. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples thus asked him, Who art thou? Knowing that it is, was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. This reconnecting, you see, uh, time to fellowship. Time to enjoy uh, the Lord's company. Time to enjoy His presence. And verse 14 uh, speaks of the type of, of fellowship. You see, it was the third time. This is resurrection time. This is, this is new creation time. This is uh, resurrection ground. You know, they're, they're fellowshipping with the resurrected, exalted Lord. Okay? He hasn't uh, uh, ascended yet, but you see again, you know, in a sense, He's resurrected. Notice, if you, if you think about in these verses, in verse 13, the Lord is still serving. You see that? He says, uh, Jesus said, cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. He's still serving. That's our Lord. Isn't that? That's amazing. He's still serving. And then, reconnecting is, is, is so we can have redirection, but you see, when thou art converted, that's what he said to Peter. He said, Peter, Satan has desired uh, to shift you of wheat, but I pray for you. See, we have to realize that you know, God is going to pers preserve us, you see. Uh, as the Lord Jesus is praying for us tonight, this, this morning, right now, okay? You know, it, it's, well, I, 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 I persevere. Yes, we ought to. It's our duty. It's our responsibility. We're accountable for it. But overall, when, when, we, uh, when all the dust settles, it's because... Our Lord Jesus is praying for us, and that's why we keep on going. Okay? But notice here, um, when thou art converted, Peter, that means when you are turned, okay? When you're brought back, uh, when you're back, reconnected, as it were, to me. Notice here, in these verses, in 15 through 17, we read them, the Lord is going to ask Peter three times, why is three times? Peter, why did, dost thou love me? Well, Peter denied the Lord three times. And, and you know, it says when Peter and, and, and the Lord's eyes met, you know, when the crop crowed three times and their eyes met, he went out and wept bitterly, you know. But, you know, one thing I, I, I didn't write down here, but just a thought, you know, they're by a fire now. They're, you know, cooking, there's fish there and, and, and there's a fire. You know, what did Peter do when when he was there before Pilate. He was out there in the outer court warming himself. It was cold. He was by the fire. He's sitting around these other soldiers and, and there's the damsel that's going to come and, and expose him. And, and he's there getting warm. And what's the Lord Jesus doing? He's in the, in the hall getting slapped upon and, and crowned with thorns. You see, uh, I think Peter was reminded a little bit about that fire. And so the Lord is saying to Peter, you denied me three times, Peter. I'm going to ask you three times, Peter. The question is, lovest thou me? Um, 
more than these. Well, is he talking about the fish? Or is he talking about his earthly occupation? Or, uh, you know, all that. But you see, as we examine verses 15 to 17, uh, the word love, for example, two times the word agape. <coughs> the first two times, it's agape. The second, the third time, in verse 17, it's, it's phalo, phalo, meaning uh, Philadelphia, brotherly love. So the Lord said, uh, Peter, do you have the God type of love? Peter, do you have the God type of love? Peter, are you even friendly? Are you even my friend? I don't know about you, that, that, that would hurt. But see, the Lord is, is, is reconnecting him, redirecting him, okay? Uh, confronting Peter, <laughs> okay? Now, uh, for example, when Peter says, Lord, thou knowest I love you, he says, Lord, you know I'm, I'm at least a friend of yours. That's the word he uses. <coughs> okay? See, God has, has done a tremendous work in Peter's life. He's, he's brought Peter to what? Well, well, we'll see that in a minute, okay? Look at, again, if you look at verses 15 through 17, the word feed. See, the Lord has, has something on his mind. He's redirecting, he's reconnecting. You see, you know, I have, you know, I have a, you know, it's really hard for when, when, when Christians say they love the Lord and they don't love the body of Christ. They don't like to be in church. They don't like the fellowship with Christians. They don't like to, to, to use their gifts and, and, and <coughs> minister to the body. I, I have our, how can you love the Lord Jesus and not love the body? You, the only way I believe that in one way, critical way, is to, to love the Lord Jesus is by loving brothers and sisters in the Lord as you would love the Lord Jesus. That's what he's done. And, but you see, so the Lord is emphasizing Peter, you say you love me. Well, love. how do you love me, Peter? He says, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Okay? Verse 15, it says, feed. The word is pasture. My lambkins. <laughs> Baby sheep. As a pastor. Peter, you're going to be a pastor. I think of 1 Peter chapter 5, you know. An elder, a pastor. Called a shepherd. And, and he says, Peter, <coughs> Peter feed. Uh, Pasture my lambkins, my little baby. You know, John says, uh, you know, I've written unto you children. I've written unto you young men. I've written unto you old men. You see, you know, there's different types of sheep. There's young, there's old, there's little babies. And so he's saying to Peter, Peter, if you love me, feed my lambkins. Peter, verse 16, it, the word feed is to tend. I think of a bishop as a shepherd, the older sheep. Peter, in the fold, you're to feed, you're to tend to, take care of, see to. We're not to be like, uh, like Peter, you're not to be like the Old Testament prophets of Ezekiel and Jeremiah, you know, these shepherds that just got fat on themselves. And they, didn't, they didn't go out for the sheep and take care of the sheep of Israel. They were there for themselves. Peter, the Lord said, Peter, no, 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 Peter, you, you feed, you be a bishop. You tend to the sheep, the older sheep, the flock. And then in verse 17, the Lord says, feed, in the sense of pasture, the elder, folder, uh, gazing, keep, uh, feeding, directing, and guiding. All, all that. And Peter, if you love me, okay, take care of my lambs, my baby lambs. Take care of my young men. Take care of my old men. Take care <coughs> of the sheep, Peter. That will show me that uh, you love me. Now, isn't that reconnecting? What, what do you mean by that, reconnecting? Like that one man said, it was, a, it, was, it was a book I gave away years ago. Was, somebody gave it to me from, it was a Pastor David's former uh, pastor, I can't think of his name at the moment, and it was a book on shepherding God's sheep. It was about sheep. It was, it was like if you went to Wales or if you went to Israel and you, you see how they shepherd sheep, okay? Um, and... Uh, I remember reading that book, and it's been 20 years ago. And there's one thing that stuck. It says, if, if you're if 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 you're out of fellowship, if you don't have a burden for souls, you're discon You're out of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he just said, if you don't have a love, a burden to reach the lost, and to care for the sheep, he says, you're you're not. You don't have the heart of Christ. You don't have the heart of Christ. There's something wrong. You need to be reconnected. Okay? 
And so the Lord questions him, what did uh, the Lord Jesus want to teach Peter? <coughs> Three times, Peter says, Thou knowest all things. Even thou knowest that I love thee. And Peter says, Lord, you know that I'm at least friendly towards you. <laughs> see, what is, you see, uh, Lord, you know everything about me. Uh, without thee, I would fall again and again. Lord, you know about me. Uh, uh, and, and that's what, what Peter is learning. He's, he, he's learning, and, and the application is, the, Peter said, I trust myself. I, self, I have self-confidence. I'm pride. You know, I'm not going to deny you, Lord, but these guys will. And when he got, got done with him, he said, Lord, I don't even know if I can, you know. Oh, what's, what's the song we, we sang it? Uh, uh, by my heart, Lord, I feel wonder, you know. Someone help me. You know the from the wander, Lord, I feel. Yeah. <clears throat> See, that's what Peter's saying. Before he said, Lord, I'll never forsake you. Lord, I'll be your number one man. And now he's saying, Lord, I, I don't even know, Lord. I don't know what you know. That's what Peter had to learn. Dear ones, that's what we have to learn. And uh, even you know, that, that last part, we'll just look at that, and then we'll, we'll close here in some application here. But, you know, verses 18, uh, 17 and 18, uh, or 18, uh, chapter 21, you know, the Lord says, uh, this is how you're going to be taken, Peter. You're, you know, uh, when you were young, you were, you led yourself, but when you're old, you're gonna, men are going to take you, they're going to take you where you don't want to go. And Peter was crucified upside down. He died just like his Lord. See, the Lord knew all things, even Peter's death, how Peter would die, and how Peter would glorify his Lord, even unto death. The Lord knew that. The Lord knew that. Let me, let me ask these questions. What can we learn and apply from this? First of all, our Lord knows all about us. Isn't that good? You know, that's kind of scary. Well, if you've got skeletons in your closet, yeah, that would be scary. Wouldn't it? You see, that's where we get honest with the Lord. We, we pray, and He's good to us. He's not going to allow. But you see, but He knows all things. He knows the best thing for us, okay? Um, you know, I, I and see, Peter finally came to the point that he mistrusted himself. I, I mistrust myself, but I trust Him. See, that's a good thing. My heart will deceive me. You know, my, my strong points, dear ones, listen, your strong points will be the points that Satan will try you the most, most of, that you will fall. Moses, the meekest man, okay? David, you know, you think about that. It's, it's, a, it's a vital point. Your strong points is your most vulnerable place. Number two, Peter was called, he was commissioned, but he was an unfit vessel in God's hand. He was full of self, pride, self-confidence, self-esteem. After his fall, he was broken, he was usable, he was not so sure of himself, but dear ones, he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. Remember what he said back in Luke chapter 5, verse 8? Let me read it to you. You turn it there. But I'll read it to you. This is what he said. When Simon Peter saw it, remember the first big draught of fish there when he was being called to be a fisher of men? When Peter said, saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You see, Peter now knew how sinful he was. Didn't he? Lord, I'm, I'm a sinful man. I'm a, you know, Lord, I would deny it. Do you think, you know, the Apostle Paul murdered Christians. Do you think Peter ever forgot that he denied the Lord? That he was out there warming himself? I mean, sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes it's the hardest thing to forgive yourself. Isn't that true? But see, the Lord Jesus wants us to forgive ourselves. We have to. Or we'll never be servants. We'll never be able to serve. We'll be always thinking about me, me, me. Why did I do that? Why, why? And we become unfunctional. We, we become useless. Dead weight. Dear ones, forgive yourself. You can. By God's grace, you can. 
But not only did Peter know, Lord, I'm a sinful man. But what else did Peter say? Lord, depart from me. Lord didn't depart from him, did he? No. The Lord didn't depart from him. He, he searched him out. Yeah, he dealt with Peter. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be said, Peter, do you love me? Uh, Peter, do you love me? Oh, that would tear me up. That would hurt. But see, the Lord did not depart. He said, I'll never depart from you, dear Christian brother and sister. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you. But he's going to teach us so he can get the glory and honor and you'll be usable. Usable. And then on the point of day at Pentecost, <clears throat> Peter was used. See, God is a God of second chances. And third chances. And fourth chances, isn't he? It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. The Lord said to Elijah two times, what doest thou here? Well, you know, what do you, you know, in, in Elijah's mind, he failed. He didn't see this great, you know, when the fire came down and, and everybody's saying, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. You know, Elijah said, man, we're going to have revival. It didn't happen, did it? You know the story. So he ran, he failed. He ran from a woman, King, King Jezebel, you know, King Jezebel. But, you know, he ran and, and he hid in the cave. He failed. I failed you, God. Ever been there? I've been there. I don't want to dwell there. Because the Lord comes to me. And he's telling what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Walling in your pity? Huh? No, he said to Elijah, Elijah, you got two more kings to anoint. You got two more kings to anoint, Elijah. Hey, this guy, Elisha, you know, he's going to be your. Your, 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 uh, you're going to be a mentor to Elisha, and, uh, and he's going to take your place, but you know, you have to train him. The Lord said, I'm not done with you, Elijah. Don't throw in the towel. Elijah, I'm not, forgive, I'm not giving up on you. You still got work to do. Peter says, I go fishing. The Lord Jesus said, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So I close with this. When the Lord says, Lovest thou me more than these? How will you answer that, your brother or sister? How will you answer that? You say, I haven't been called to the gospel minister. Oh yes, you have. You've been given the great commission, just like I have. You know that? You're a witness just as I am. Every Christian is a witness. That great commission was given to the church. You're part of the church. But you see, uh, when he says, Lovest thou be me more than deeds? You, do we love the comforts of this world more than the luxuries, the material things, my job, my gifts? The command is, there in, in chapter 21, verse 10, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. That's the command. And Peter is doing it. And we should be doing that too. The command. And what is usually our response? Well, maybe it's like Peter. Master, we have told all the night and have taken none. Lord, we have told all the night and we've taken that. What did Peter say? Nevertheless, Lord, at thy word, he put down the net. You see, there are blessings <coughs> for obedient faith. Let me ask you. Do, you. do you carry around tracks? You have a bunch of tracks. They're not just for me or for young people. Uh, do you have tracks in your purse? In your jacket? Do you carry them? How about new, little te new Testaments? I mean, you have to be prepared. 
I mean, you, you, you know, I, I know you, you know, well, I believe in uh, lifestyle evangelism, so do I. I, so, well, I also believe that we should preach, we should teach, we should witness, we should tell them about the Lord Jesus. We have to confront them in their sin. We have to be ready, we have to prepare. We're, we're a witness. Not only how we live, but what we say. We, we're to be pointing people what? To the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I said this morning, when you take communion tonight, Think of this question. Lovest thou me more than thee? How will you answer? How will you answer? It's important. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, thank you for seeing this. Uh, oh, your grace, Lord Jesus. <coughs> Your grace that, you know, we would have uh, disciplined, committed Peter. He was, uh, he was dead weight. But thank you, Father, that you have other plans. I pray that we would be more like the Lord Jesus and that as we try to <coughs> restore, brethren, uh, think about our own hearts and lives as we would be witnesses and evangelism and testimony. Not only that, we would be fit vessels, usable vessels, ready to go. But Lord, we would be broken vessels that we would not steal from thee the glory and the honor. Uh, Lord, we, we often say we can't do that. We're, we're not prepared. We're not equipped. Yes, we are. We have God, Holy Spirit, just like Peter. He could pull that big net of fish in, and Lord, you would, by your grace, if you so will, we could pull in a great big net of fish too. It's not going to be by our might or power. It's going to be by the Spirit of God. And so Lord, help us to be faithful. And Lord, help us to examine our hearts. Um, why aren't we evangelistic? Or uh, why are we cold towards you? Or to cold towards the lost? Uh, because we love other things more? Give us grace to be honest with ourselves, Lord. And grant us repentance. And we know, it says, we might say, Lord, Lord, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. But we know that you're not going to depart from us, because you love us. You're going to love us, you loved us to the end. And you're going to love us, keep on loving us. And we thank you for that. Oh, may we glorify you and honor you. In Jesus' name.